Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Now, if you're relying 100% on Lightroom's AI masking results, then the quality of your images is not as good as they could be. In fact, if you don't fix this mistake from the beginning, it's going to make the rest of your edits more difficult. So every one of these photos has the same mistake. Can you see it? If so, let me know in the comments. In this video, I'm gonna share the mistake that occurs with Lightroom's AI masks. And if you stay until the end, I'll show you the quickest way to fix the problem. My name is Chris Parker, and I'm a professional landscape and wildlife photographer. I create weekly videos with pro tips for improving your photo and editing skills. Subscribe if you want to see more. All right, so let's take a look at the mistake. See what it looks like on three different images. Since the mistake will affect some photos more than others, then I'll share how to fix it. So let's take a look at this photo that I created at the Superstition Mountains in Arizona on my last road trip. And the way I like to edit is I like to apply my basic tonal adjustments here first. So let's take a look at the original image here, straight out of camera on the left, and my final edit on the right. So once I do those global adjustments with these tonal values here, I will then add masks to target the sky and then the landscape. So here is the sky mask and the landscape mask. So at first glance, it doesn't look like there's any problems with this image until you zoom in and take a closer look at the details along the edges. Now, this particular saguaro right here is very dark on top. And if I turn that overlay back on, you can see that it's kind of targeting that area. And I applied a separate mask with a brush to remove the sky adjustments that are being placed here. And once I turn this back on, you'll see that it's much brighter than it was before. So the sky mask is not just selecting the sky. It's selecting more of the image, the landscape, the saguaros, everything else in the foreground is being selected as well. Not everything, but some of it and enough of it to lower the quality. If we come back over here on this side and take a look at this saguaro, you can see that it's very spotty in terms of detail. There's not a lot of detail in there. And that's because if we turn the mask back on, the mask is being applied in this area and it's removing those details. So I have a lower quality image because the edits that I am applying in the sky here, negative 77.77 for exposure, lower highlights, as well as the temperature and the clarity and dehaze that are being applied to the sky are being applied to the saguaro as well as other parts of the image. The rocks here are being affected as well. And until you go in with a brush and paint that out so it's not on the sky or part of the sky edit, then it's going to provide a lower quality image. And if I turn this off, you'll see there's a little bit more detail in that saguaro now, and that's with the sky mask turned on. All right, so we need to remove the sky from those areas, but it's kind of hard to see exactly where the sky is also being applied in the rest of the image with our overlay here. Now, by default, we have a red overlay, but because I want to see exactly where it is, I will come in here, click on this little square, and I will change the opacity of my overlay so I can see it better, as well as adjusting the color if need be, because right now red is kind of in the tonal values here or the color values here in the mountain. Red is kind of hard to see until I come over here with blue. And then you can see that actually, let's come over here and you can kind of see it right in this area here. Let's go a little bit darker. So we may need to change colors to actually see it, but it's kind of difficult with any color. So if you're not seeing this mistake, what you want to do then is come over here to these three dots and select white on black. And then once it converts, boom. There it is right there. You can see some detail in the peak right here, and that is part of the sky selection. So the sky edits are being applied on the peak in this area, as well as over here, a little bit over here. And as we navigate around, I'm just holding down my space bar to get this hand tool, and then I can click and move around. And you can see this saguaro here, and these over here are all getting the sky edit. 
So we need to remove this from the sky before we go on to the next editing step. And that is to right click and select duplicate and invert mask. And this will then create a mask for the landscape. But what happens is if you don't fix it, then the edits that you want to apply in the landscape are not going to be applied on these elements that were selected as part of the sky. They are now being removed from the landscape mask. So that's why you want to fix this before you invert your masks to ensure the edits are being applied exactly where you want them. Now, before I show you that, it's really easy to do. We're gonna come over here and take a look at another image and we can actually see the color overlay on this image here. And then you can kind of get an idea of where those edits are going to be applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and show overlay. Of course, the white on black is always going to show it better than a color mask, which is why I recommend going to white on black. But now that I have this dark purple blue color, you can definitely see the overlay is being applied or the edits are being applied in different parts of this image that I shot in New Mexico. I believe this is the Beastie Badlands, but it is so much easier to see where those edits or where that overlay is created and where it's not. So you can see all these little dots in here. So it's definitely not selecting the entire sky and those edits are not being applied down here. That's why it kind of looks pixelated in this area. Now this next image, I'm not really seeing any effects of the sky mask before fixing it. So some images will be affected more so than others. Now I can definitely see that the sky came in here and made some selections of the landscape, but it's not really altering the edits as much as the other two images but I would still come in and fix it before inverting so you don't have to worry about doing both of those masks or doing a lot more editing after the fact. Now this particular image here, I shot this at the Horseshoe Bend in Arizona and it's really affecting the, I believe these are the Vermilion Cliffs back here in the back. So the sky edit is really altering the detail and the quality of these cliffs back here. If I turn off the sky mask, you can see without it, there's more detail in those cliffs. So I'm really lowering the quality of my image by not fixing the mask first and then inverting it. Because once I apply this landscape after the inversion, well, it's not really altering or applying those edits in the cliffs because they're not being included in that mask. So the quickest way to fix it is to come in, go white on black. You're going to select subtract. Let's make sure that that overlay is shown. And then you wanna select your brush to remove that edit or that mask from this area. In this case, the landscape. Now we wanna make sure we have auto mask turned on and it's going to find the edge of the contrast of one side versus the other. And it's going to keep that application of the brush on the side that you click on. So now I can just come in here with a big brush and paint over these areas and it will quickly remove it. Now I'm keeping that inner circle on the inside of the landscape. So on the cliffs, I don't want it to go outside of that line into the sky, otherwise, I will start removing that mask from the sky. So it's just a matter of coming through, hold down your space bar, click and navigate to the other side, and then going through and adjusting the mask accordingly. And then you're gonna come in and you're going to right click, duplicate and invert, and then you don't have to fix that second mask because you fixed it on the first. To continue elevating your Lightroom editing skills, check out this playlist with more pro tips.